Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Craven County Board of Commissioners regular session for Monday, July 6th, 2020 is now in session. Madam Clerk, would you call the roll? Sure. Commissioner Booker? Here. Commissioner Liner? Here. Commissioner McCabe? Here. Commissioner Mitchell? Here. Commissioner Sampson? Here. Vice Chairman Jones? Here. Chairman Mark? Yes, here. Uh, would we stand for the pledge, please, and the prayer? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you please keep standing? And we have a very important person in the room tonight. It's his birthday, and let's sing happy birthday to Gene. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Eugene. Happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Now we'll go to the prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, a certain Samaritan finding a stranger by the roadside beaten and robbed without hesitancy put him upon his donkey carried him to an inn and charged the keeper saying take care of him and whatever you spend extra I will come again tomorrow and repay you Lord thank you always for the opportunities to do good to bring healing and restoration to the sick the dying and the suffering let us not love in word only but with unselfish actions just like the Samaritan expecting nothing in return we pray give wisdom to the leaders of our county to act in unity let us give liberally as wise and prudent stewards whereby the world will know we are the children of god let us bind the brokenhearted lift up the fallen and let those who fear put their trust in the lord i pray these things in jesus name amen commissioners amen. Amen. you've had an opportunity to look over the agenda are there any Additions or deletions from the agenda? Mr. Chairman, from my man, I'd like to make a motion that we delete item nine commissioner's report for this evening. Second. Okay. We have a second. Motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Nays? No nays. Okay, next is Yeah. Good idea. Mr. Chair, I'd like a motion that the agenda be approved. Second. And a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Nays? The ayes have it. Next is petition of citizens. And before we have them, I have to read general comments. Comments directly pertaining to policies or issues which are under the statutory or administrative authority of the board shall be made during a general comment period occurring at the end of each regularly scheduled meeting. Comments during this period shall be limited to those comments directly pertaining to issues which are under the statutory or administrative authority of the board. Comment periods are not intended to compel board members or staff to answer questions in an improper manner without adequate opportunity for preparation or consideration. Comments periods are also not performs for debate before a speaker. Board members or county staff, action or issues raised during the comment period, if any will be at the sole discretion of the board. Each speaker must address the board as a whole and not as an individual commissioner, county and staff members or audience. The lectern shall begin his or her remarks by giving his or her name and address and the topic for which they intend to speak. Each speaker will have three minutes to make remarks as measured by a timer operated by the county staff. A speaker may not yield any of his or her time to another speaker. Speakers must be courteous in their language and presentation and must abide by generally accepted standards of decorum. Speakers shall not make the same or repetitive comments whether during a particular comment period or over the course of multiple comment periods. Speakers shall not attack or insult any person or group of people 
and speakers shall not give belligerent or hostile comments during any comment period. Do we, Assistant Vice Chair, do we have any speakers? Mr. Chairman, we do. Tonight we have uh, two citizens that desire to come before the Board of Commissioners to address us. The first would be Mr. Floyd Bullock, Jr. from the Harlow Volunteer Fire Department. Mr. Bullock. Good afternoon and thanks for having us here today. State your name. My name's Floyd Bullock. I'm the chief of Harlow. Mr. Bullock, if you will, hold up just a second. Hold just a second. And uh, are they going to, we cannot hear. We you. have a problem with the mic. Staff, it will work on it. We'll get right with you. Can you hear now? No. Move over close to the mic. Can you hear me now? Not loud enough yet. Test it again. again. Now we can hear you. All right. Anything? Yeah. Wh where's the video, Robbie? Yeah, bring them up. We got them coming. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. My name is Floyd Bullock. I'm the chief of the Harlow um, Volunteer Fire Department. And I'm here to talk about, uh, we found out there's a piece of land next to New Hope Church that possibly the fire department could get. And as you know, for pump training, water supplies, but the biggest thing is, as you know, it's there's only one way into the There's only one way into Adam Creek when we have hurricanes. And um, we could use that to stage for the swift water teams and um, for the um, drop offs for when the um, National Guard come in to drop off stuff and when the um, Red Cross come in to um, Deliver food. We could use it to places to deliver food. And, um, we really could use that piece of land. And I wish we knew about it earlier. We, 
we haven't long to find out about it. Because it's that last year, I think we had eight feet of water right there, that first curve, mm -hmm. which is about 300 yards from that piece of land. And um, we did a water rescue. So water rescue, we had, they had, once we got on the other side, we had to walk all the way to Craven Corner Church. And if that we if we could if we could use that piece of land and do away with that having to walk that far, once we could, we could stage stuff from Station Two up there, F4 and the well the Swiftwater West Cross, they could drive up, they could drive up, pick them up and take them where they need to go. And we, before the, the water rises, we could stage their boats and stuff there also. And, and if I'm not mistaken, it is big enough to land a helicopter there. So in case we have to set up an LZ, we can land a helicopter there. Any questions, sir? There's no question. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you. So let the assistant chief come in now. Thank you. Next, Mr. Chairman, we have uh, Mr. Milton Everett, Jr., who's also from the Harlow Volunteer Fire Department. Mr. Robert. Good afternoon, everyone. How y'all doing today? Um, Chief Bullock went over pretty good almost everything that we um, were looking at to use it for. Um, we have had the, to look at to see if it was big enough to land a helicopter on and it's plenty big enough and it's out of the way of where any, you know, no trees or anything or power lines would be in the way of if it was, if the helicopter would land. It was one of the major things we needed because the nearest, right now, we used to have a LZ, which was at Plantation Harbor. And then the guy that owned the land at Plantation Harbor turned around and leased the land to another guy and he parks his trucks out there. So we have no landing area for the Adams Creek, the Godfrey, um, none of that area down there. So with that there, we would have a landing zone. The nearest one now, Havilah has to transport either all the way back to Havilah or we use right out there by our station on 101, there's a a guy that lives out there, and he has let us land on his private road. That's the only place that we have. So that was one of the, the things that we really needed for is for that and for staging during this um, hurricane. I, I did have the amount of parcels and everything that I had. I get that piece of paper Mr. Mark has, so if you need that information, he has that. That's all I have. Any other questions, Chair? No questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the consent agenda. Minutes of June 15th, 2020 regular session. Tax releases and refunds. The board will request to approve the tax releases and refunds as shown in attachment 2B. Healthwick budget amendment. The board will request to approve the budget amendment as shown in attachment 2C to fund 23201 processing unit supervisor and unfund position, unfund position 22913. I have a motion. Make a motion. Second. Roll call vote, please. Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman J Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Okay. Next is Stanley Kite. Department of Matters, Emergency Service, NC Department of Insurance, NCDO County Grant Match for Fire Departments. Good afternoon. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you tonight. Uh, I would like to present to you. Hold it just a minute, Stanley. Hold it, Stanley. We can't hear you.
Try it now, Stanley. Can you hear me now? Now we got you. Now we got you. Okay, not sure what's going on with that, but anyway, I, would, I appreciate the opportunity to be with you this evening uh, to present to you the, the Chief of Wilson Creek Fire Department, uh, Fort Bonneville Fire Department, uh, Representative Roger Weathers from for number nine Fire and Rescue, and Chief of Dover Fire Department. These departments received following grants. Wilson Creek received 299950 Fort Bonneville received 30000 Number nine received 267.8750, and Dover received 29.707. And as they had indicated earlier, they're requesting that you approve those grants and to match these with the county of funds to help them maximize their purchasing with this grant money. And uh, I have all of them available tonight. If you have any further questions or would like to ask direct questions of them, uh, they're, they're present and they're on. On the WebEx right now. Okay. Do I have a motion to so approve? So move. Second. I'm sorry. Second, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Anyone have any questions of any of the fire chiefs? Being no discussion, I have a roll call vote, please. Sure. Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Thank you, Stanley. Next is Scott Harrelson, federal funding related to COVID-19 budget amendment. Good evening. Oh, this evening I'm here to uh, request some budget amendments. Uh, looks like three different items, and they are three different pots of money. Um, so we'll do them on an individual basis, okay? Okay. It may be a little redundant because even though there are three pots of money, they're being used for very similar things because it's all got to be COVID related. All right, so maybe we can do it on one then. <laughs> the, uh, the reason we're privy to these funds is because of the federally qualified health center status. So these came through the FQHC. Uh, one was a small grant through NC Community Health Center Association in the amount of twelve association in the amount of twelve thousand three oh three. Next pot of money was uh, CARES funding, that was the largest pot, $635,615. And then we got a nesting grant in the amount of $176,629. So that's all three pots of money uh, for COVID response. And this is the funding a, a medley of things a lot of staff, a medley of things, a lot of staff time because uh, we kept all of our clinics running, our drive up testing on Tuesdays and Fridays, and that we're also doing the testing on Tuesdays and Fridays, and that we're also doing additional testing as needed on the other days of the week through the primary care clinics. We've set up screeners at the front door. We screen all of our staff, but now we're screening everybody with them to take temps. And, that has really been a uh, prudent and that has really been a uh, prudent move because we have actually had a lot of wanting to know where to get tested and we kind of be able to handle that get tested and we kind of be able to handle that before they got back to the staff we have been trying to order as much uh, personal protective equipment in the form of isolation gowns respirator mask or browns respirator mask we're burning through a lot of that on a daily basis with the staff test kits we use the state lab we use lab have uh, that are manning uh, phone lines that are manning uh, phone lines we have contact tracers that's the bulk of the work after you do the screening at where we uh, have to do isolation and quarantine we, uh, have to do isolation and quarantine orders and now we've gotten into uh, 
hire contract interpreters with some of the contract interpreters with some of the uh, contact tracing efforts. There are, are a couple of uh, run specimen, run specimens, uh, labs back from our Havelock site. We do not have a county car to do that right now. It's an, it's an employee using their personal car because they live in Newburn and work in Havelock. And we'd also have an SUV in here. Also have an SUV in here. We have an SUV that uh, we purchased with preparedness funds much, well, preparedness funds back in 2003. It's still a decent vehicle, but we'd like to upgrade and, and get that to carry the uh, storage unit that we set up the mobile testing, or it could even be for mobile vaccinations later. Right now, we've actually borrowed tents from New We've actually borrowed tents from Newburn Fire Department, uh, some drive-through tents and other things that they had because we just didn't have them. So these every every so these every everything in these pots of money or basically you know, this could be for several more months until a vaccine is months until a vaccine is is available. Okay. We have three budget amendments. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Is there any discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Scott, um, which as far as the vehicles, which uh, are is, is it coming out of each the 635,000 and the 176,000 or? Just the 635, 635, the largest block of money, yes, sir. Okay. Right. It was two, it was an SUV and a, and a like maybe a vehicle like a, a Ford Fusion is usually what we um, order. Any other discussion? And no discussion, could I have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Booker. Commissioner Booker. Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McKay? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Don't go away. Uh, can you give us a report on the covert uh, numbers? Yes, sir. Uh, right now we were, or we are, uh, at about 83 active cases. We had 14 new cases over the weekend that pushed us up to 392. I do believe we had another reason for the lag. Um, both the state lab, um, both the state lab and lab core are about six or seven days out once wow. you submit a test, which is not really good for our contact tracing because you get confirmed positive. Positive. So now the state has actually um, approved an antigen test, which is a quick turnaround accurate. They may give some false negatives, so we'll, but give some false negatives. So, we'll, but the positives are usually pretty accurate. Um, we actually have a private office, CCHC, and take a, a quicker reference guide on a positive to begin contact. Quicker reference guide on a positive to begin contact tracing. Now we're going to order some of those as well to have that available, and you send the negatives in. You're not missing a positive, um, and that not missing a positive, um, and that that should improve some response time locally. We have one in. Uh, it appears that the cases that we're seeing is that the cases that we're seeing um, are uh, moving around more through a healthy population, and I do believe I and I do believe I. We, we will have a seventh death coming for the county uh, that wound up uh, acquiring COVID. So wound up uh, acquiring COVID. So uh, unfortunately, I uh, got that news this afternoon. Um, Mr. Chair, I, yes. I, I have, um, Mr. Chair, I, yes. I have a question. Um, a, a lot of the you know, hospitals, doctors' offices, nursing homes are doing fast turnaround um, COVID tests. Are they, is that the antigen test or are they using different labs? There are two different tests. There's an Abbott test that the hospital may use that will not be the antigen test that we, put, that we have ordered. And uh, with any of those tests, there are questions to the level of accuracy. I think that the gold standard is the one that's taking so long. Pragmatic, because sometimes you just need to know. Well, pragmatic, 
because sometimes you just need to know. Well, in six days, somebody can infect a lot of people. That's right. And, you know, if our staff, if they feel under the weather, we're going to need to, we don't want them out of work for six days if it's, if it's not COVID. So we want to be able to, you know, as. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Yes. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Yes. Commissioner Liner. Scott, are you having any problems with your people for the contact tracing? Are they getting any pushback? I'd say for the most part, people are being uh, good to work with, but we we have had some individuals who are not disclosing all of their close contacts. And then, you know, later that day, we'll get a call from somebody who's worried because they were a close contact that individual, that's worried because they were a close contact that individual, that said they didn't have any close contacts. So, you know, a lot of this is based on what the individual may tell us or what well, oftentimes what their employer may tell us as well. One other thing, are you, I know you're working hard and heavy on the funding that you've got, but there's a good possibility you're going to get another large dump. Close to $300,000 probably. Close to $300,000 probably. I'm aware of. Well, I understand there's more feds coming as well. So. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't heard about that. You know, you had sent out some percentages uh, going back a few days ago, yes, sir. and the one thing that stands out is that the people in the older age group seem to be lower percentages than the people in the middle age groups. Yes, sir. Only eight percent of our cases locally are 65 and older, so I think that that population is is taking the precautions, necessary mm -hmm. precautions and being careful, that uh, is where we're seeing a lot of the yeah. cases now. We've had a lot of pediatric, we're seeing a lot of the yeah. cases now. We've had a lot of pediatric cases, and uh, fortunately, a lot of people have had very mild symptoms. And uh, that has been another issue, trying to explain to a young person that you still need to stay home for the rest of your 14 days. That you still need to stay home for the rest of your 14 days. Um, because that infectious period if, if you're not around other people, then that's going to be that many less cases everybody's going to have to deal with. Right. Mr. Chairman, you got a question over there. Yes, Danny. Two things. I didn't hear you say, maybe you said it, I'm, my hearing's shot. <laughs> How many people have recovered? Oh, um, I did not remember, I'd say well over 250. I'd say well over 250, 275 people recovered. I think the number is 313. 313? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Commissioner Mull. How many? 313. 313 recovered. Yes, yeah. sir. If you say so. <clears throat> Urban. Uh, That's what it says. <laughs> Over 300, yeah. Sometimes urban legends are interesting, but I heard today that some people were getting tested by their doctor, referred to the health department for a second to be tested again, the health department for a second to be tested again. And the question was, can somebody, could, could there be a double count of somebody in that situation? Um, there, there could be, and, I, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that something like that has occurred, but it is corrected. And you'll see a discrepancy between maybe our local numbers and what the state website may have for us. But uh, I would say that our local numbers are, are accurate. Okay. Yes, sir. That's fine. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Are there any other viruses going around that, are, you know, right now that, you know, people may be feeling bad from and they think it's COVID, but out of the norm? Uh, I haven't seen uh, a whole lot of other um, or upper respiratory things. Um, we def upper respiratory things. Um, we definitely have had some people who, the, the, the symptom list has gotten so broad now that, uh, you know, may have some of the symptoms, um, but fortunately they uh, came back negative once they were tested. Okay. Yes. One other thing I'd just like to understand <clears throat> from the expert. <laughs> okay. One of my friends um, mentioned to me the other day that he and his wife both in February 
were extremely ill for several weeks with tremendous fatigue, um, fever, etc. And they went, she went to be tested with, to her doctor, and she tested negative for the flu. Mm -hmm. um, later, she went and was tested for COVID, and she had, she was already recovered. But I believe the way he said it, she had the antibody. Is that, is that would that be correct? There is an antibody test. Now, we don't provide. He had the antibody, which would indicate that she did have COVID, body, which would indicate that she did have COVID before we even knew what it was. Is that possible? It would be possible, yes, sir. So then he went, and he also had tested positive for the antibody. antibody. So I guess what I'm saying is it, it, it if this is accurate, then it could be that uh, we had people who had COVID recovered, whatever. Does that make because sense? I think our index case was early. Does that because make sense? I think our index case was early March, and you're, you're saying these folks were sick in February. February. Yeah. Our index case, as far as we know, was, you know, that we have recorded was early March. So, yeah. Could have been. Could have been prevalent. Okay, thank you very much, Scott. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention, I'm going to switch gears, uh, the uh, Animal Control Department has recently had their Department of Ag inspection, 100%. Uh, Terrific. Yes, uh, Miss Eileen Beeson, her staff doing a fantastic job, and the euthanasia rate's down to 21%. Good. Oh, very good. Thank you. That's great news. Thank you. Okay, next is... Don Bumgardner, Department of Matters Planning Golden Leaf Foundation Project Craven County School Emergency Generators. Well, we're here tonight to inform you that uh, the county has been notified by the Golden Leaf Foundation that we have received a grant award in the amount of $1,393,800. These grant funds will be used to install permanent generators uh, in entire, to actually power the entire building at five of the county schools. Uh, these schools are Tucker Creek Middle School, West Craven Middle School, Adelock Elementary, James W. Smith, and Arthur Edwards Elementary. After the Hurricane Florence, uh, these schools had lost the power in their HVA systems, and the county schools uh, experienced uh, extensive mold throughout the building, extenuating the time that the schools were closed, and uh, also dramatically increasing the cost of repairs to get these buildings uh, reopened. At this particular time, uh, these schools are the ones that received the most damage we have applied for hazard mitigation grant funds for the other schools, funds for the other schools, schools that we use for shelters, as well as other schools that did not uh, experience the mold issue that these did. And we've actually applied for emergency generators for those other schools. Uh, we have not heard anything yet from the state about the hazard mitigation grant funds for those generators. These five schools have been funded, and we will be moving forward to uh, start the process of putting this work out to bid uh, so that this can be accomplished. Uh, in order for us to move forward with this program, uh, a motion is needed to authorize the chairman to execute the grant agreement and the associated documents for the Golden Leaf School Emergency Generator Project. Okay, so moved. Motion. Uh -huh. We have a motion and a second. Do I need a roll call vote on this? I wouldn't think so. No? But I'll be glad to do one. Yeah, let's do one. Okay. Because there, there is a grant. So. Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. <laughs> Commissioner McKay? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. 
Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? Yes. Thank you, Don. Yes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I just may say, Don, I want to thank you and the, um, your staff for searching out this grant. Um, this is wonderful for uh, these five schools, and um, we had a lot, some serious issues after Hurricane Florence in many of these schools due to, due, due to mold because we did not have no circulation. And uh, it, this is some of the greatest news we've had in a long time. So thank you all for doing it. Next is appointments, pending, current, upcoming. Pending Adult Care Home Advisory Committee, Nursing Home Advisory Committee, Recreation Advisory Committee, District 5, Regional Aging Advisory Board, Senior Legislative Tar Heel Alternative, uh, Alternate rather, Coastal Carolina Regional Airport Authority, and Craven County ABC Board. Havelock Planning Board. Make a motion for William Gray. Okay, accepted. Emergency Service Advisory Committee. We have Judea Stencil, Fort Barnwell, Jeffrey Fedenar, Havelock Communications, Alexander Stricter, North State Medical Transport. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion for Mr. Stancil. All right, and I'll make a motion for Alexander Sticker. Emergency Service Advisory Committee. Tom Brubaker, New Bern Communications. Tim Brazemore, Coastal Medical Transportation. Chad Brad Bradicek, Elite Medical Transportation. I'll make a motion for Mr. Brubaker. Okay, I'll make a motion for the other two then. Juvenile Crime Prevention Council. Catherine Hardison seeks reappointment as the nonprofit sector representative. Jean Kennefick seeks appointment as the substance abuse representative. And Susan Hall seeks appointment as the Trillion representative. Okay. North Carolina, Carolina Association of Commissioners designating voting delegate for the 100 commissioners designating voting delegate for the 113th annual convention August the 6th. I will be uh, doing that, and if I'm unable to, uh, the vice chairman will. Upcoming terms expiring, Recreation Council, Chad Braxton, District 1, Matt Webb, District 4, and Daniel Miller. Havelock Board of Adjustments, Reuben McCall, Thomas McCarthy. Children, uh, Community Child Protection Team, Debbie Hodges, School Designation. Fire Tax Commission, Sue Authors, District 6, Emergency Service Advisory Committee, Jane Sabator and Deborah Rogers. And we have an appointment here for a William H. Gray. That's the one I just nominated. That's the one you just nominated, right. Okay, that's the end of the appointments. County Attorney's Report. Barry Grady. Sir. Chairman, Commissioners, good evening. Uh, I have three items for your consideration this evening. All three involve county-owned real estate. The first is a final offer uh, to sell real estate lo located on Southwest Craven Middle School Road, tax parcel ID number 9048181. Um, this is a final uh, approval after a preliminary offer in the upset bid process. We did acquire this property through a tax foreclosure. The bid is $5,000. The current tax value is $8,950. And the original taxes and foreclosure costs were $6,210.70. And 
and we do recommend that the board uh, approve this uh, final offer this evening. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Nays. Ayes have it. Uh, the second item, item is an initial offer to purchase uh, or to sell real estate owned by the county. It is tax parcel number 5004042. Oh, there is um, no street address with this parcel. The offer amount is $1,800. Um, the original taxes and costs uh, from the foreclosure uh, were $1,812.21. The current tax value is $4,680. Uh, as the board is aware, uh, if the board approves this matter tonight, we'll go through an upset bid process, and at the conclusion of that process, the matter will be back before the board for final approval. Uh, and it is our recommendation that the board uh, accept and approve this initial offer. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Nays, the ayes have it. Uh, the third and final item is a carryover from the May 18th uh, meeting. As the board will recall, we have an initial offer to sell real estate at 865 Adams Creek Road. Tax parcel number 5014305. Uh, the information on the par property uh, is, is again in your agenda packet, but uh, just to refresh all of our recollections, the offer amount was $3,000. The current tax value is $3,600. This is not property that the county acquired through a tax foreclosure, uh, but otherwise it was. Um, from a dispute resolution process some years ago back in 07. Uh, and if you look at it from that vantage point, the uh, county's investment in this property is $21,000, but I would not read that into the market value at all. Um, so it's uh, back before the board for your consideration this evening. Okay, we've heard two gentlemen earlier this evening talk about this. Do I have a motion? So moved. Can I speak on this, please? But as soon as I get a second, yes. Is there a second? A second. Okay. I want everybody to realize that oh, I want everybody to realize that oh, that land over there, you have uh, oh, 750 homes in that community. And you got 500, 700, 51 parcels of land, and 307 land under about. And like this gentleman said, it's on one way in. We don't have a bridge there. If it's a bridge, oh, I can see it. But there's no bridge there. And whenever there's floods, there's no way we can get in and rescue all the people out of, out of the area. Plantation Harbor, all those divisions. They are left there vulnerable without any, any type of emergency uh, um, thing from the uh, fire department, the ambulance, uh, the helicopter of the uh, water rescue and everything. And it's so significant that this land is given to the fire department because of that. It's a little piece of land that they need to bear bad. And if you don't get it and something happened over there, what what you can think then? Because we could have put some there to get the people out of there because the other they sick, they hurt, we cannot get them out of there. By putting uh, Emergency vehicles, fire department, ambulance, whatever is there, we can help everybody in the community. Right now, the river is bumble, they cannot get out and cannot uh, uh, help themselves. So it's very crucial that we get into this land. We need it very bad for the, for the emergency for the fire department. It's, it's a little bit a lot. It shouldn't be that hard for everyone to accept that. What I'm telling what I'm telling them to get. And we need it this land very bad. And it's for food distribution, it's for uh, anything we need. Because that, that uh, since the bridge is not there, we don't hope to get one in the future, but right now we don't have a bridge. That water comes down now, or there's a piece of wind or a storm, no one cannot get up and get the people out of there. Nobody. It's so important. It's so crucial that we get that piece of land. I can't say it to say if a piece of dirt not use it. We can use it for emergency, not that people. Somebody can kill what we do about it. Oh, this name we didn't get. It, it, that's, that's, that's crime.
time to me. We need at this land. I hope you got that everybody in my constituency folks, my uh, colleagues will vote yes on this land. But we need it very, very, very important. I would like to make a motion that we will observe what Commissioner. Well, we have a motion on the floor already, I believe. Let's vote on the first motion. Is that correct, Mr. Attorney? Yes, sir. I believe the motion was to accept the initial offer. That's correct. Mr. Chairman. Yes. I just made the bait motion. Um, you know, I am 100% in favor of always trying to put land back on the tax books. Uh, I think that it's essential that we do that. Um, this is a little bit different situation. It's not a little. It's a lot different than most um, foreclosures or property that's owned by Craven County. Um, you've got less than a half an acre here. Um, if you did the math on it, you know, the, putting it back on the tax books, the county's going to get less than $10 back out of it a year. I'm not saying that that's not significant over a period of time, but uh, we've heard a, a, a plea tonight or the desire um, that it can be used um, for the betterment of that community. And, um, and I, I will tonight have to change some of the way I usually would vote on circumstances such as this, and I would vote no for the motion to um, accept the offer. And rather, I would support that this parcel of land be uh, turned over to the Havelock Volunteer Fire Department with the criteria that, you know, that um, it be used for the betterment of the community and that if ever in the future that it was not needed, that it would revert back to the county. Um, that they could never sell it or, 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 and then at that point, the county could put it up. But I, I think the justification really comes into the fact about that, you know, that, that road does flood. There is only one way in and one way out. And I think it, it would be to the betterment of this community and for, for the citizens there if the fire department had a location um, that they could utilize. And you've heard the number of things that they said they would use it for. So uh, I would support um, personally um, voting to give this piece of land to the ha uh, Harlow Fire Department. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I understand that uh, this land was being sold to be used as a farm. Is that correct, Commissioner? That is, that is correct. Can you give us any more information on that? Um, the, the couple that chooses to, to purchase this is to uh, use it as part of their niche farm that they are establishing in this area with it as well. Um, I don't disagree with anything that Commissioner McCabe said. However, I am concerned about setting the precedent. Uh, Harlow is not the only community that gets flooded and has no access. Um, I would point out to everyone that the sides developments off of Old, Old County Road are also isolated because that bridge also floods as well um, with it. And I guess one of my questions is if this was so urgent um, and it has been on the county rolls for almost t over 10 years, then why has such a request not been made before? So yeah, I, there's value to both proposals. I certainly see that. Um, you know, I think each commissioner is going to have to vote their, their conscience in terms of which they go. Um, do I support the disabled veteran and his wife who are trying to make a living? Yes, I do um, with it. And I don't so I'm just going to leave it there. Okay. Can I say something? That land over there, in the beginning, the history of that land, that they already purchased, their land was going to my great uncle, Jennifer Harsh. He, she died and left his wife there. She sold to Harry Taylor. Harry Taylor did a dish right there, so they purchased some of it. And Harry Taylor then sold to someone else. And then this land, that little block piece of area, less than, it's less than uh, a lot. How in the world they can use all of this land here and not, not bother this land here? This little piece of land ain't gonna hurt them. You gotta put a, 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 a 
pack, pack things in there. That's not true because first the front part of it doesn't work. It's flooded. I've been there land. I've been all little kid hunting on it. So I know about that piece of land. And right now we are talking about this piece of land, this road being flooded, not other, not other counties, this county, Harlow, not other counties. Is that on our agenda? But this one is. And it's very, very important that we get that piece of land for the people in the, the community. You can't wait that somebody have put money over some other lodge. You can't do that. It's a little piece of land. You got all this young acres that wouldn't work. We want a piece of lot that we can use for emergency for this people in Creek Corner, Adam Creek area, and plantation. So two ways out of that, yes, I can understand it, but there's one way out of that area. I don't care if the land been 40 years, you can talk about now. Is there any other discussion? Mr. Chairman, I was thinking that since people were coming closer and closer together trying to help one another, and we, we, well, I know I realized that if you have a small section that you can't get to in any area, and you have a tragedy, then somebody is here responsible. And I wouldn't like to have been, have voted to turn this land over to someone else that wasn't gonna be concerned that much about those people who ca cannot make a decent living and have somewhere for to be protected, some way to be protected in that area. I would, I would rather vote that this land be turned over to the fire department that they may have a way to protect the other citizens. Okay, is there any other discussion? Being no other discussion, could I have a roll call vote, please? Okay, and the vote currently, the motion is to accept the offer to purchase the parcel, okay. Commissioner Booker? No. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? No. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Sampson? No. Vice Chairman Jones? No. Chairman Mark? Yes. Mr. Chairman, um, due to the motion failing, I would make a motion that Craven County um, deed this property over to the Harlow Volunteer Fire Department with it being put in the deed, and you correct me, uh, Mr. Turney, if I'm wrong, but being put in the deed that if they ever cease from using the, the track of land or desire to sell it, they would have to be, well, it cannot be sold, but they would have to revert back to Craven County government. I'll second the motion. Okay. Can, can we go on discussion? Yes. Can we have the manager get with, we need to add some things to this because it should not be able to be subleased. It should not be able to be used for any purpose outside but the fire department has got right. and everything else. I mean, we need to have other, I, I hear what you're saying, but what you just mentioned, we need to tighten that up a little bit more. Yeah, I agree. And, and Mr. Chairman, if I may, um, I, I think I understand the intent of the motion perfectly uh, clear if the board directs um, the management team and the county attorney to proceed in that direction, what I would uh, suggest is that we have a more formal resolution and the actual deed with the re reversion language in it back before the board for final approval so everybody can eyeball it and make sure they're comfortable with the words before the chairman and clerk sign and deliver the document. Okay. so. Can we, uh, you're saying we should table this to another meeting? I, I, I think if I, not necessarily, you certainly could. I this think, motion now, President. I think I understood the motion basically to direct us to uh, go figure it out, get the details, draft the documents, and bring it back to the board uh, perhaps at the next meeting for a more thorough slash final consideration. If I will amend my motion to state that. Okay. So we have a motion. Yes. No, Mr. Johnny second. Mr. Johnny second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Can I have a roll call vote, please? 
So this motion is authorizing the attorney to draft the deed with different. I'll help you with the language okay. of the motion right. for the minutes. I, I think a affirmative vote would be um, saying the county wants to convey this property subject to the fire department, um, subject to further restrictions, and we're going to bring the documents back for final approval to okay. the board. Okay. Wanted to make sure everybody knew what we were voting on. All right. Also, did the uh, fire department get a copy of this? Is that in here? Of course, they'll get a copy. They'll get it in the deed. Okay. Sure. Sure. Commissioner Booker? Yes. Commissioner Liner? No. What are we voting on now? We're voting on your motion. I know, but I didn't make a motion. Well, Johnny well, did. What was it? What was it? To approve turning over the land. To, to the fire department. department. To the fire yeah. department. But we're going to draft an agreement that will be brought back to the next meeting. Yes. Okay. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? No. Commissioner Sampson? Yes. Vice Chairman Jones? Yes. Chairman Mark? No. Thank you. Okay. Is the uh, Assistant County Manager have anything to say? No, sir. Just uh, thanks everybody again for the birthday wishes and um, <laughs> hope everyone had a great fourth. Is Jack still on with us? Uh, doesn't sound like it. Well, happy he beach, did, Jack. The board. <laughs> oh, he is there. Hey, I am here. Hey, I'm here. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I was take I was taken away for uh, Gene's birthday song a few moments ago, so I'm still in all of that. But uh, I'm happy to be with you guys tonight. Uh, thank you. Okay, thanks, Jack. Okay, commissioner's reports were. Uh, a motion was made not to have them tonight. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Thank you. We're adjourned.